Hi, this is a short tutorial for Exapatch. I wrote Exapatch while working on several mods for the game Sid Meier's Pirates and being frustrated with how difficult it was to make even minor changes to the code. IDA Pro has a built-in assembler, but it's really dumb and it can only assemble one instruction at a time, so if you make a mistake you, have to, you may have to type the whole program again. Free hex editors like Furhead and WX Hex Edit are both buggy and frustrating to use, and typing machine code into a hex editor is error prone anyway. I started using an assembler to build pieces of the mods, and then running a script to convert the binary into a Python program to patch the IDA database, checking to see if it looked okay, exporting a diff from IDA Pro, running that through another script to convert it into a hex dump, open, opening the binary in WX hex edit and pasting the hex dump in there. And a single mod might have up to 10 pieces, which means going through all that whole process up to 10 times. And if the mod didn't work, you had to start all over. So halfway through making my first substantial mod, I was almost ready to smash something, or at least cry. So I developed a little IDE for patching programs in assembly, and with that done, I was able to make three more mods in three days without any stress. So it worked out pretty well. I didn't expect to release it, but then I thought it might help somebody else. So here's how it works. On the left side is an assembly view, and as you type, the code is assembled in the background, and the output shows up on the right side. If you make a mistake, you'll find out right away. And the assembly is in NASM format, not MASM or TASM format, and you have the full NASM assembly at your command. So you can do macros, Um, and all that. Complete documentation on the NASM format is available from the help menu. When you're done, you can save the generated binary or generate an IDA Python script to update an IDA database with the new code. So let's develop a simple little mod for Sid Meier's Pirates that eliminates the effect of aging. This mod is so simple that the IDE is hardly necessary, but we'll do something slightly more complex later. So let's say we found the function to calculate the effects of aging using IDA Pro or the cheat engines, say. Uh, I'm using IDA Pro. So we see that it's at address 4048A0. So let's pull this code into Exapatch. For a mod this simple, we could just start typing. But uh, I'm trying to show off all the features here. So let's copy this address and go back. Now to import the code, we'll use the disassembler under the, file, under the file menu. We can disassemble code from a file on disk, from the clipboard, assuming it's in hex format, or pull it straight out of a running process. Um, the latter is most useful if you're doing dynamic analysis with the cheat engine, for instance, but we'll use the file on disk. Now paste the address into the start offset. But we have to be careful because the address in memory is not the same as the address in the file. For an, for an executable, the difference is usually 400,000 hex, which is the base address where the executable code is loaded in memory. And we don't want to disassemble the whole file, so we'll specify a length. We could go back to IDA Pro and figure out the exact length, but it's easier to just grab more than enough and chop it down later. For instance, if you remember the code from IDA Pro, this is where it ended. Okay, so notice that it automatically filled out the org line, which specified was, specifies where the code is loaded in memory. And it put the memory address even though it specified the file offset. Now it's not smart enough to actually parse the executable and map between physical and virtual addresses using the section headers. Instead, it just assumes a particular difference between the two, 400,000 hex by default. This can be changed from the tools menu, but you're unlikely to need that. Now let's implement our mod. Well, that was simple. Now let's generate an IDA Python script to update our IDA database. We can do that from the Tools menu, Generate IDA Python Script. Now you can see that it put the memory address there. It did that by scanning the org line in the assembly text. If we cancel and change the org line, you can see that it gets the new address. Alright, so 
we go back and generate our script, and it places it on the clipboard. So we can switch to IDA and choose Python command from the file menu, or just press Control F7. If you don't see this here, then you need to update your IDA Python plugin. And you can just paste in the expressions and click OK. Now if you look at uh, this disassembly, it's wrong because the return instruction is not here. Um, this is because IDA Python doesn't, I mean, this is because IDA doesn't handle patches very intelligently unless they exactly line up with the existing instructions. To fix this, you can simply press U to undefine the function and press P to redefine it. And there you go. Another way is to um, add enough knops in here so that it exactly lines up with the original instructions. But I think this is fine. And that's nice and all. And now we want to test out the mod. And in fact, you should really hold off on patching the IDA database until the mod is fully tested. We can easily patch the executable with our mod using the Tools menu. So once again, it calculated the offset for us based on the org line. And, uh, and by the way, you could, you could specify the file offset explicitly on the org line if you need to. And it'll parse that and you can see it'll uh, use the appropriate address as necessary. But we don't want that because the default is correct. Now if the game was running, you could directly pass the running process and see and get immediate feedback. And that's actually the best way to do it. But unfortunately, the screencast program I'm using can't record DirectX graphics, so I can't show you uh, how it affects the game. So we'll just patch the, the executable on disk and pretend that we tested it. So that's it. Now if you make changes to the mod, I want to patch it again, you can just hit Control p and then Enter, because it remembers the last file or process that you patched. Now what about a mod with multiple patches? So let's put the original code back and do something slightly more complex. So here's the original code. And if you remember, um, well, we'll patch the executable again first to undo our changes. I just realized I've been opening up new tabs. We don't really need to do that because if we keep the same tab open, it'll remember our patch settings for us. Anyway, so instead of eliminating aging, let's just slow it down by 25%. If you look back in the IDA disassembly, you can see, oh, we forgot to uh, put the original code back here as well. So if you look in the disassembly for the original code, you can see that it does some calculations based on the number of elapsed years. And we don't really need to understand the, all the rest of this code, because all we really need to do is uh, scale down the number of elapsed years and by 25%, and that will um, reduce the effect of aging by 25%. But there's no space to insert the necessary code. If you look down at the bottom, you can see there's only one byte of free space between this function and the next function. So we'll need to store our code somewhere else and then jump to it. Now a jump would take five bytes and uh, this instruction to load the number of elapsed years takes six bytes. So I think that's a perfect place for it. And then we'll jump back to the next instruction here when we're done after loading the scaled down number of years into EAX. And I know just the place where we can put our new code Hmm. 
here in the leftover corpse of the CD check function. So let's grab this address and write the code. Now if you remember, this was the line that grabbed the number of elapsed years. Or instead of using a comment, you can define a constant, which is a better way to do it if you're going to be accessing this address more than once. Now we need to multiply it by 3 and divide by 4. And uh, then we need to jump back to the instruction after the one that jumped to us, the next instruction in the function. All right, that's our redirect. And now we need to add the bit of code that jumps to this. So that's going to go here. And it's going to jump here. Now again, instead of duplicating these addresses, you can uh, use constants up here, and that's what I would recommend if you're developing a more complicated patch. But now you can see that there's there's an error, an assembly error. That's because the program can only have one origin. Also, we'll add an op here so that it exactly replaces the existing 6-byte instruction. That way it'll prevent IDA Pro from getting confused. Anyway, so there can only be one origin in the program. <clears throat> so there are two ways to proceed. First, you can comment out, comment them all out, and then go through each chunk one by one, uncomment, control K is a shortcut to toggle commenting, control P, enter, control K, next chunk, control K, control P, enter, control K. Um, and that works, you know, with each chunk it'll, it'll get the org, the correct address from the org line, so all you have to do is hit control P, enter. And that's fine with just a few chunks, but if there are a lot of chunks, it's better to use the multi-patch feature, or it's at least faster. So to do that, uncomment all the chunks, and you'll get the assembly error, but that's okay. Then select multi-patch from the tools menu. Now you see that the offset is auto. What it'll do is it'll break the program in, into chunks based on the org lines. And everything that comes before the first org line, like the bits32 line and this g underscore elapsed years constant, is considered part of the header. and It'll be added to the top of each chunk. Then it'll assemble all the chunks, and if there are no errors, it'll apply them all as a patch. So all we need to do is hit enter, and it's done. You can multi-patch a running process just as easily. Similarly, you can generate an IDA Python script for the whole mod at once using the multi-script feature. So we did that, and now we'll run the script. And you see that it, that it worked. There's a jump here and hit C to tell Addy that there's code here, and there it is. Now you don't need to add a new chunk for every bit of code. If you have 20 redirections, for instance, all of the bodies can all go in, in one chunk, say, you know, like this one, and and then the, the the jumps would have to be in their own chunks. But for the, all of the redirection bodies, they could all go in one chunk. And you could define uh, constants that have their addresses. And that way you, it reduces the number of chunks that you need to edit. That's basically it, but I want to show one more miscellaneous feature that might not be obvious. <coughs> it's not uncommon that you'll be writing some code and then realize you need to store a value into a different register. Perhaps you did some calculations in ECX and EDX, 
And then you realize that you need to do a division, which requires clobbering EDX. But you still need the value in EDX. Here's a simple example. So as a result of this, you have some calculations in EDX and ECX, and they're all intermingled. But now you need to do a division at some later point, and uh, you want to swap EDX and ECX so that you don't need to clobber EDX. Well, all you need to do is, well, you could go to the find and replace and replace EAX with XSX, replace ECX with EAX, replace X with X with ECX, but that's a pain. So all you really need to do is you can go here, type the two strings in, and click swap. It'll swap them. And it's not useful that often, but when it is useful, it does save a bit of time. And that's it for the XMPass tutorial. I hope it helped.